The secret to this pretty face is to tear somebody else down to make me feel better about myself. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Raphael and I'm here to review episode six of The Real Judgmental Housewives of Potomac. We start the episode off right where we left off with Karen going at it with Giselle. They keep going back and forth about this whole situation with Karen saying, oh, you know, Giselle, you wish Ray death and I want to apologize. And I just, I just really wish that Karen would just drop it at this point because at this point it's starting to look like, okay, you just want a storyline and you want this beef with you and Giselle to continue on all season. And for what? I'm not sure why. It's just like, if she didn't have the situation, like let's let's remove the whole Giselle and Ray situation out of the equation. Then you know Cam really doesn't have a storyline. She really doesn't. So it's just like I really feel like she's clinging onto this so hard because she wants to have drama. She wants to have a moment with Giselle. And I agree with Giselle. Like Giselle's just like, um, there's nothing to apologize here. This is from four years ago. And again, if you want an apology from Giselle, you also have to take ownership of what Ray said to her as well, because what he said to her wasn't right. And just because he's your husband doesn't make it right either. And it must be a cold day in hell when Candace is the voice of reasoning all of a sudden, because she's like, look, Giselle, you need to take ownership of what Karen feels. And Karen, you need to do the same thing with Giselle. And we need to all just hold hands and act like the Brady Bunch. She's just like this whole different person. It's like light and day here. <laughs> I'm like, so where was this energy with Monique? How come you didn't take the time out to, you know, realize what your part in that situation was either? But, you know, better late than never, I guess. But she's just telling both of them that they both need to calm down and kind of talk about it. Giselle's reply to Candace is, you know, I'm down to, you know, fix anything, to throw anything in the garbage, as in the relationship in the garbage. And I'm like, damn it, Giselle. Like, we were just getting somewhere. <laughs> I really thought she wanted to mend things with Karen, but yeah, she doesn't want anything. And Karen's like, until I get my apology, it doesn't really matter. The conversation goes nowhere and we get no solution. So all the women just get up and go their separate ways to their own room. And then we get Wendy, Karen, and Escala, and they go to their own cottage house on the side of the house. And the house looked cute. I expected something more terrible or whatever, the way they were hyping it up, but I thought it was cute inside. And then they're all going inside and they, Karen calls a Scala to Scala. <laughs> and Wendy's like, you might as well just call her Tesla at that point. That's not her name. <laughs> and I'm like, did I hear that correctly? I thought it was just me, but I'm like, no, it's a Scala, Karen. We also get a quick shot of Mia calling her daughter. And we also get Robin calling her son. And did y'all notice how quick Robin hung up on her son? <laughs> <laughs> she was on the phone with him like, look, look at the nice room that I'm in. Isn't it cute? Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Click. <laughs> like she did not want any part of that conversation. She's like, okay, I wanted to just check up on you for two seconds. Goodbye. I'm on a girl's trip. Leave me alone. Then we head over to Ashley and Creepy Michael's place and they're having a photo shoot with baby Dylan and baby Dean and the pictures came out cute. They were really cute. I like the whole idea, the whole setup. I'm like, oh, okay. The pictures are cute. They're Facebook worthy. And eventually, after the photo shoot, they start talking and, you know, Ashley starts telling Michael while Michael's holding the baby that, you know, Giselle wants to put herself out there again. She wants to start dating again. And she also asked him, oh, so do you know anybody who's available for Giselle? And Michael was just like, well, I, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, hold on, baby Dylan. I'm not really sure. Uh, is, is Juan Dixon available? Oh, he's still not married to Robin. You don't say. Oh, I'm sorry, baby Dylan. Uh, daddy, daddy was too excited. Oh, really, Ashley? He's still available. I mean, he's still not married. Interesting. You know Michael was about to risk it all. You know he was about to leave this photo shoot, get in his car, do a hundred on the highway, head over to Juan's house, knowing that all the women are far away from here, and go up to Juan and be like, look, I'm not her, okay? I can be the one. I don't have to wait through a pandemic. I'm here and I'm ready. Look at me, pick me, choose me. But he controlled himself enough to tell Ashley, well, a pandemic really shouldn't affect the wedding. I mean, they're either gonna get married or they're not. He just wants to know what time he should text Juan that hey big head text message so he could rekindle the passion between them. Did y'all also notice that when Ashley mentioned, oh, I'm gonna go on the trip for like a day, he also said, well, I could bring the child to work and you know, I have like five women that could take care of him. And I'm like, okay, who are those five women and why are they around my children? <laughs> like, uh, Ashley, you're not asking the right questions here. I'm like, uh-huh, that sounds a little bit, 
you know, suspicious. Eventually, we get all the women getting ready and they're all getting dressed and they're all getting ready to meet up. And we get over to Wendy and Wendy just has Happy and Miss sitting up here. Like, <laughs> she just has them on display. She looks good and I'm not mad at her for it. And we also have Scala and Karen. Scala looks so beautiful. Karen looks good. And then we have Giselle who looks like some flowers that have been on water for a couple of days. And then we have Robin who looks like an orange with no pulp. And this is where the bullshit starts with Giselle and Robin. I mean, I get it that Giselle has to play a character and I get it with the housewives, everybody plays a character, you know? That's what makes the show the show. But sometimes it's just like, Giselle, certain things just don't need to be said, you know? Like, you really don't have to like stoop that low to, to you know, to make a storyline or to make a moment on this show. You really don't have to do that. And Giselle's like, you know, yeah, I want this balcony. It looks so nice, doesn't it, Robin? So anyway, let's talk about Wendy and how she's insecure. So yeah, I don't like that this new Wendy's just putting her body out there and Robin is also co-signing with this. And I'm like, Robin, just stop. Like, just for once, I would like to see your lips not tattooed on Giselle's ass because I feel like you could actually be a cool person. I also didn't like the way Giselle addressed the whole, oh, I wonder if Wendy likes her servant quarters. Like, what is that supposed to mean? Just because you're staying in a bigger house and they're not, like, what is that supposed to mean? If that was the case, we all should have just chose a different estate that had enough room for everybody to stay at the same place. So that way it wouldn't be those whole, oh, my house is better than yours. Because at the end of the day, they all have nice houses, Giselle. And yours look like a drive through restaurant connected to a smaller house. So I'm not sure what you were trying to get at with this situation. And I know that Robin is not the one saying, oh, did you see her bodysuit that she came on the bus with? Oh my God, what was she wearing? What was she thinking? Like, Robin, I know, <laughs> I know you're not speaking like that when your best friend over here, Giselle, dresses like a Target mannequin 24 seven and you say nothing. I mean, if anything, you should be criticizing her clothes and telling her, uh, Giselle, what are you wearing? You need to step it up a little bit because you're embarrassing me. It was just leaving a terrible taste in my mouth the way both of them were criticizing Wendy like both of you are pretty too and I don't get why y'all act like that to somebody else like somebody who's supposed to be your friend like we're not all supposed to stay the same 24 7 if Wendy was uptight or whatever you want to call it last season and she's somebody else now let her be I don't get why it bothers them so so much that she's more out there with herself now. At least Candace and everybody else who's not Giselle and Robin can appreciate Wendy's new look for what it is because Candace's is like, ooh, are these? <laughs> she's just poking at them. She's like, I hope that this new Wendy's here to stay. So I like that. As Robin and Giselle are talking and Giselle continues on with, oh, I mean, there were some rumors out there that Eddie's cheating, you know, maybe she's trying to overcompensate for something. And I'm like, you see, Giselle, this is the same issue that I mentioned earlier in the video that you don't like when others talk about you and your relationship, specifically Karen. You don't want Karen to make up rumors or lies or anything, but you're the same one here sitting down telling Robin another rumor that you heard about Wendy and her husband. So what is it? You don't like it when it's done to you, but you're over here doing it to somebody else, let alone your own friend. When Wendy walks in clueless, you know, thinking everything is good. And she's like, oh, hey, everybody, like, what's going on here? Like, are we having a deep conversation or something? And Giselle was like, oh, no, nothing. Like, oh, like, just terrible. And I saw that Wendy was tweeting earlier as she was watching the show, too. Like, oh, it's funny how she walks into a room and nobody says anything to her. Like, that was the perfect time right there. If you were so desperate to get to know why Wendy is the way she is now, you should have just been like, okay, Wendy, let's sit down really quickly before we all have dinner or whatever. And let's talk about what's going on. So is Eddie cheating on you? Like, if you really wanted to know that value, you should have just asked right then and there. Eventually, all the women reunite downstairs in the living room and Candace brings out gifts and I'm like, ooh, what is it? And it ends up being a swim cap. And Giselle's like, well, I'm gonna do water aerobics in the morning and I'm gonna be teaching the class because I wanna teach you ladies how I swim in a pool full of Jamal's lies that he tells me. So I'm gonna teach everybody here how I do it on a daily basis. And then Karen's like, uh, water aerobics is for old people. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> You're not 21 either. So, you know, let's just pull it back on our comments. <laughs> and you see Wendy just look and suck like, water aerobics? And Karen is like, <laughs> like they were not here for this idea finally all the women get over to this restaurant and they're all sitting down for dinner and Giselle starts grilling I mean she starts barbecuing she starts making hamburgers she starts making hot dogs she starts grilling Candace with all these questions because Candace is trying to you know show a little bit side of her with Chris and how Chris is her manager now and everything and managing her career her music career 
And Giselle is just like, so is he Chris Jenner now? So how many times are you sleeping with him? Is he giving you money? Are you giving him money? Are you giving him an allowance? Is he paying your toenails? Is he doing everything at home? How many times do y'all eat? Does he use the bathroom on Tuesdays? Like, what's going on? And I'm like, Giselle, like, what's with these questions? Again, like, whoo. <laughs> like, Candace was a better woman than I was because if I was Candace, I would have been like, Okay, so only women who have a husband here are allowed to ask me a question. Anyways, Giselle. <laughs> like, Giselle was just, ah, uh, just, she comes off so rude with some, some of the things that she says. She, she's just so out there with it. And I get it, she plays her role on the show, but, <laughs> but damn, Giselle, like, just reel it back a little bit. Y'all saw how Karen and Wendy reacted to when Giselle said, oh, do you think that he's just writing off your coattails? Because that's what it looks like to me. And Candace answered that very, very well to me. I mean, she had a perfect response. She was like, well, I know my marriage. <laughs> she put emphasis on it. <laughs> I know my marriage and I have a husband, so we know each other. <laughs> exactly, Candace, exactly, you know. Oh, it's just Giselle's just, <laughs> Giselle's just something else. Then we move the conversation over to Robin and Robin shares to the group that, you know, she's been a little bit unmotivated lately. She's just been in bed and she's just been, you know, sleeping in all day. She doesn't know if she wants to do a two for one special on her hats. And she's just really putting it out there that Juan doesn't really find her attractive, doesn't find her attractive that she's just doing all this. She's being lazy and she's kind of being depressed and Juan doesn't see it for her like that. And then Giselle, your own friend, just like Karen said, she kicked you while you was down. I was like, wow, Giselle, like, you really have no morals. I know we're all filming a show, but damn. <laughs> like, she was just like, so do you think that Juan is going to marry you? Because you're unattractive right now. Like, that's not attractive. And I'm like, wow. The closest person to you on the show. Look what she says about you on TV. Like, that's just, who? that's embarrassing. I wonder what it would take for Robin and Giselle to fall out. I mean, do y'all think that we'll ever see that on the show? Like, Robin versus Giselle? I mean, that would be insane if that ever happened. And as Robin continues to share that she might feel like she's neglecting her children, here comes Giselle. And Giselle's like, Robin, no. Oh, my goodness you're neglecting your children no you cannot do that what is wrong with you you're such a terrible mom and wife just all calm down this is your friend like we get it she just confessed that and you're over here just spitting it back in her face like 10 times harder Ascala points out that she herself had depression before and what she's hearing from robins kind of sounds like what she's been through as well and she suggests that she should you know maybe talk to somebody get some help and there's no problem with that. I mean, again, Robin experienced all this through the pandemic. I'm sure that many, many, many other people experienced the same exact thing with or without the pandemic involved. So there's no shame in Robin getting a life coach or getting help or getting any type of therapy in order to bring her back into like some type of order in her life. And maybe she has to leave Juan. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's the thing because Juan just, oh, he has not been showing himself in the best lighting this season when it comes to Robin. I mean, you're not even understanding. You're not nice about anything to her or her feelings so maybe you know maybe you just need to go the single route and maybe we need to try that out again the little ounce of sympathy that i have for robin after sharing all of that went right out the window the minute that wendy was like oh i keep eating my boob is about to pop and you know giselle just leaped into action she was like oh we're gonna talk about it right now so i this is the first time that i've really been seeing your body parts like this much like what's going on here and then here comes robin you would think that after robin shared everything about her mental state and mental health and having the conversation about depression, you would think that she would be more understanding to Wendy, but she wasn't and I was so surprised. But then again, I wasn't surprised. They just start asking her questions and accusing her of being somebody else. Like, oh, you know, you just been so out there with your body, you know, ever since you got your body done, it's just boob this and boob that, boob this and boob that. And Wendy's like, well, of course, like a woman who just experienced postpartum is not gonna be the same woman that she was two months ago. And I just wish that Giselle and Robin would understand that. But no, Robin had the nerves to say, oh, you know, I just feel like you've been acting more loose. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> like, I was shocked. The same thing that Giselle and Robin were telling Wendy are the same thing that some men actually say about other women. Like, oh, you know, I just feel like you shouldn't dress like that. You're never going to be wifed up. You can't wife up a hoe because you're too out there with your body. You know, you're just coming out very hoeish and stuff. That's what, exactly what they were doing. It's like they were slut shaming, body shaming. They were doing all types of shaming to Wendy. And I did not like that. And I love that Candace and her confessional was like, I don't get why Twiddle and Twaddle are all up in 
Wendy's areola. Like, mind your business. If she wants to put it all out there, it is what it is. And I really like that Candace said that. And I wonder how their friendship tide is going to, you know, shift after this, especially after seeing that. Here comes Mia. Mia's like, well, I don't think that, you know, Michelle Obama or Oprah would do that type of stuff at all because they have a lot of respect for themselves. And I'm like, what? I'm like, Mia, stop. Like, <laughs> like you were doing good up to this point and now I just need you to exit stage left. <laughs> like, what? And Wendy's like, no, that's not how it goes. I could be a professor. I could be sexy. I can be all of this and still do what I want to do. There is no rule on... Oh, a woman needs to act like this. A woman needs to act like a lady. No, you don't have to act like that. If you want to act like a bad bitch, you can act like a bad bitch. There is nothing in life that says women need to be acting like this. Women need to be acting like this. Women need to be in the kitchen dressed like this up to their necks. Like, no, that is not how it works. And I'm glad that Wendy took ownership of that. Just because she's a professor doesn't mean she has to be wearing tuxedos or dressed up to her neck or anything, you know, have to be covering every single thing. She could still be the same person in and out of those clothes regardless. All those degrees that she mentioned last season still apply whether she's wearing a bikini or whether she's wearing a suit for work. Like, it does not matter what she's wearing. At the end of the day, she's still who she is with or without the clothes. It's just crazy to me how Robin, Mia, and Giselle were coming off so judgmental to Wendy. Like, you would think that Jamal cheated on somebody who has fake boobs and a fake ass the way Giselle was acting. I mean, is that what it is, Giselle? Is that what you're so upset about? Like, that Jamal goes for these type of women and not you? Like, what's going on here? And I'm glad that Karen jumped in and was like, look, Wendy, you don't have to defend anything. Like, if you're happy with what you are and who you are, then that's all that matters because that really is all that matters. I mean, Wendy does not have to explain herself to any of these women, especially Giselle. Like, Giselle's the same one that loves to point fingers, but the minute that she gets a finger back, she's like, wait, 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 no, we're not discussing that. I feel offended. I feel attacked. Let's change the conversation. And here comes Oscala asking the right question. She's like, well, so we're on the topic about relationship. Giselle. <laughs> I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> She's like, so does Jamal, is Jamal and you, are y'all together? Like, what's going on? Does he follow you on Twitter? What's going on here? Because I don't think he does. <laughs> and Giselle, of course, she's like, well, I'm not going to discuss anything right now. And I'm like, well, there you have it. You see what I'm saying? You're such a hypocrite. You want to grill everybody else's marriage and everybody else's situation. But when it comes to you, oh, no, 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 no. It's a secret. And she's like, well, and her excuse was, oh, well, Karen's here and she's a troll. And I don't want to discuss anything in front of her. So whatever you want to talk about with me and Jamal, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions in private. I'm like, no, you wouldn't. Even if Ascala did ask Giselle in private about Jamal, I'm pretty sure that Giselle would have been dodging the question as if she was little Kim or something like, oh, wait, oh, oh, there goes a question I'm dodging. Oh, wait, what do you mean we're in a relationship? Oh, I dodged that one. Uh, yeah, no, he loves me. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Too many questions at one time. Oh, wait. They ended the whole night with Robin saying, you know, Wendy, I just want to say that you were beautiful before and after your body. And I'm like, Robin, who are you? <laughs> like, go sell some damn hats. Because the way they made Wendy feel, I did not like that. Like, Wendy cover herself up. She's like, y'all are making me feel weird about this. Like, what if this confidence is not because of Eddie and this is simply because of her? You know, not everything has to be attached to another man. She could be her own person as well. What if this newfound confidence that Wendy has found really is who she really is? And here y'all are trying to, like, make her take it back. Like, oh... I guess I'll go back to being insecure now. Okay, never mind. I just wanted to have fun now. I guess I'll go back to being uptight or something. Like, is that what you want? Like, let Wendy be Wendy. If this is who she is now, let her have fun. Let her express herself whatever way she wants. Maybe in a year from now, she'll be in a new stage in her life where she wants to be somebody else. And that's okay because we as people get to evolve and we don't have to stay the same forever. All of the women finally head back home. And of course, Giselle goes up into the room with Rob and they're like, yeah, did you like our plan? I'm so happy that we got it out of her. And what they really mean by that is, I'm glad that we broke Wendy down a little bit to feel better about ourselves, to sleep better at night. Then we see Wendy and Wendy's like, I cannot believe that they think I have no substance. I mean, my left boob has more substance than Giselle. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Okay, the left one could have more substance than Giselle, but the right one could have more substance about Robin. So, you know, equal. 
<laughs> so then we wake up the next morning and we see Candace outside making a video for her OnlyFans. And she's like, I just really want respect from the music greats. And I'm like, who are these music greats that she keeps promoting on here? <laughs> like, I want to know who she's talking about. Like, who's respect that you want so badly from the music industry? Like, who is it, Candace? I'm very curious to know. We see Mia calling her children as well because, you know, she's like, well, I still want to give them time even virtually because, you know, that's her issue with her family that, you know, she's trying to balance out her life and balance out her time. So she's trying to give some time to her children even if it's through a phone call. Then we get this touching scene between Wendy and Karen. And Karen notices that Wendy's a little bit more covered up. And she's like, why are you covered up? What's going on here? And Wendy's like, well, you know, I just wanted to, you know, be a little bit more covered up for breakfast. And I just really hope that Baskin and Robin have no type of big effect enough for Wendy to change her whole persona and to go back to somebody who she doesn't want to be. You know, if this is who she is, this is who she is. And I hope that she stays put and she doesn't change because of what they said to her at the dinner table the night before. I also forgot to mention what Karen said the night before at the dinner table. And she was like, well, if we want to put our pubic hair on display, we can. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay, I agree. <laughs> Karen uplifts Wendy and she's like, you're a beautiful woman. Don't let Giselle or Robin try to tear you down because that's exactly what they want. They want to tear you down so they can feel better about themselves because they're jealous of you because they know that you're a beautiful person and they can't stand seeing that. Wendy replies and just says that it's just shocking that a year ago, the same person, Giselle, said that I had so much substance and a year later, here she is telling me that I have no substance. And to me, that's very heartbreaking because you don't see me as a person. And then she starts crying and it was just so heartbreaking to see that like, Giselle and Robin, like y'all have stooped to a whole different low with this episode, especially your words to Wendy. It was so not nice. You know, I get it that we need drama and you know, we like messiness and stuff, but there's a certain level <laughs> that we need to respect on certain shows and with certain people, you know? Like Wendy didn't do anything to either one of you. You know, she rode so hard for both of y'all last season and she was on your team the entire time. And now you just throw her out there in the wind like she's nothing to you. And then Karen hugs Wendy and she's like, if you're gonna cry, do it now. Do not give Giselle or Robin the satisfaction of you crying in front of them because that's exactly what they want. And I'm glad that Karen really motivated Wendy. It's just a whole different turn from what their relationship was last year to what it was this time. I mean, who would have guessed that Wendy would have been crying to Karen and Karen would have been the one right there helping Wendy keep it together. So it's crazy how time changes everything. I wonder if Giselle and Robin ever look back at these episodes and they're like, oh, maybe we went too far. Maybe we shouldn't have said that. Like, I wonder if they feel any type of guilt for this specific episode because what they were doing to Wendy, I just... That was just not nice. But that was the episode, y'all. Let me know what y'all thought about it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Bye, y'all.